This is Detective Recapped. Today I'm going to explain a thriller film called Inheritance. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. Lauren Monroe is a successful district attorney who's helping out with her brother's political campaign. During an interview, Lauren receives news that she never expected to hear. Her father, Archer Monroe, has suddenly died. After the funeral, the family lawyer and Archer's longtime friend, Harold, reads the last will and testament. To the disappointment of her mother, Catherine, and her brother, William, Archer left practically nothing for Lauren. While she isn't particularly happy about this, Lauren half accepted this because of her distant relationship with her father. But what puzzles her is that Archer did leave her with something, and Harold is giving it to her in private. In Archer's office, Lauren opens the package and finds a flash drive. She opens the laptop and discovers a posthumous video message that Archer left. Shock and confusion overtake Lauren as the video reveals a family secret that her father wanted her to take to the grave. To see the secret with her own eyes, Lauren heads to the woods within their property as the video instructed. There, she discovers an opening that leads to an underground bunker. She unlocks the door and goes down the stairs through a dark pathway. Despite her growing fears as she goes deeper into the place, she remains determined to unearth her father's secret. Eventually, Lauren notices a room. When she enters, the horrifying sight of an unconscious, chained-up man greets her. She slowly reaches out to check if he's still alive, but the man suddenly moves, frightening Lauren and making her run away as fast as she can before securely locking the door again. That night, after sending off her husband and daughter, Lauren decides to stay at her parents' house. She doesn't tell anyone about the captive man. The next day, she goes back to the bunker to confront the man. But since he's sleeping, she hurriedly takes his blueprints instead. While she's doing so, the man suddenly awakens and meets her eye to eye, frightening Lauren. Upon realizing that she didn't cover her face, she abruptly leaves and returns with a mask on. The man has a scruffy face. His hair is far too overgrown and his clothes are dirty. But he stands still before Lauren, mocking her for wearing the mask. Lauren demands to know who he is, but instead of answering her, he tells her everything he knows about her family, including her husband, her daughter, and her sour relationship with her father. Ominously, the stranger claims to know her like the back of his hand. Later on, the man realizes that Archer is dead, leaving Lauren with the burden of her family's secret and without a clue as to why he's there. He wants to negotiate with Lauren, his freedom in exchange for all the information she needs. But at the same time, the man knows that she's smart enough not to do that. So instead, he asks her to provide him with the food he's been craving throughout his years of imprisonment. Before leaving, Lauren hands him the shave he requested and shuts the door. Back in her father's office, Lauren calls someone to run a test of the man's fingerprint. She then buys all the food he mentioned and notices a customer reading the newspaper about her brother's election run. When Lauren returns to the bunker, the man looks cleaner after his shave. The mere smell of the steak overwhelms him, and she also brings a cake, a bottle of drinks, cigarettes, and a bar of chocolate. The man points to a box, which contains photos of him throughout his years of captivity, and he shares that Archer was the one who took them. Finally, the man identifies himself as Morgan Warner before holding out his hand to Lauren. Morgan recalls how he met Archer. They had a lot of fun together when they were younger, and eventually, they even became business partners. But one night, while driving drunk, they accidentally hit a pedestrian. Morgan claims that Archer had convinced him not to call the police and decided to bury the body instead. But since Archer was afraid that he was going to turn him in, he hit Morgan in the head and dragged him to the bunker. He's been imprisoned since then. This leaves Lauren stunned, and she refuses to believe that her father could commit such a crime. To convince her, Morgan reveals that Archer had an affair with a woman named Sophia. He persuades her to locate the woman to prove that he's telling the truth. As soon as Lauren left the bunker, she fulfills her duties as a district attorney and tries to focus on her case at hand in the court. As for Morgan, he remains imprisoned but he works out, pets the rat, and does more working out as though he's preparing for some laborious activity to come. Just as the captive suggested, Lauren goes to visit the place where Sophia is living. The moment she laid her eyes on her, Lauren could see how gorgeous Sophia is, while Sophia is taken aback to see the famous district attorney there. When Lauren asks about her affair with Archer, she confirms that their relationships helped her achieve better status in life, but she clarifies that Archer had always loved his wife, Catherine. Unfortunately for Lauren, her father's affair isn't the only thing coming to light that day. She notices a photo of a young boy, so Sophia confesses a gut-wrenching truth. She has a child with Archer, and Lauren has a younger half-brother 
mother that she never knew existed. Lauren panics as she thinks about how hurt her mother would be if she finds out, so she urges Sophia to never tell anyone about her son. She leaves Sophia's house, trying her hardest to keep herself together, as she still needs to investigate Morgan further. That night, she barges into Harold's office to confront him about Sophia, but he calmly informs her that Sophia is bound by a non-disclosure agreement, like that's supposed to make anything better. Lauren proceeds to demand him to divulge what else her father was hiding, but he assures her that Archer had no more secrets. She asks if he knows a man named Morgan Warner, and Harold says no again. Lauren then goes to meet her mother, subtly inquiring if Archer had an old friend named Morgan, but Catherine doesn't recall anyone with that name. William joins them to ask of his sister's presence in his campaign rally, and though Lauren is reluctant to participate given her ongoing investigation, she assures William that she will be there. That same night, Lauren returns to the bunker and demands to know more about the body Archer buried to prove that he's telling the truth. Morgan insists that he wouldn't be able to describe the place, but he'll know it when he sees it. Morgan clearly wants to get out of that bunker, and while Lauren's aware of the possible consequences of letting him, her desperation to unravel the truth convinces her to let him go. She removes the shackles around his neck, but he remains handcuffed while Lauren leads him out. As soon as Morgan can finally look up at the night sky, he's overwhelmed with emotions, especially when it dawns on him just how much time he's spent inside that bunker. Lauren, however, has no time to sympathize with him and urges him to move along while still pointing the gun at him. While they're traversing the woods, Lauren's husband keeps calling her to the point that she can't ignore him anymore. Her husband nags at her for forgetting their daughter's recital, and although she's apologetic, Lauren has no choice but to deal with Morgan first and drop the call. With Morgan as her guide, she drives along a dark and secluded road until they arrive in the woods. Morgan immediately points out what he claims is the exact spot where he and Archer buried a body. Not wanting to remove his handcuffs, she decides to dig it herself until Lauren finally unearths a skull, proving that a person has been entombed a long time ago. And if Morgan's words were true, that it was her father who did it. Despite being confronted with the proof that she had asked for, Lauren's still in denial of her discovery, so she hurriedly covers it up again. They return to the bunker and with Morgan thinking that he finally convinced Lauren that everything he said was true, he expects her to free him. Unfortunately, Lauren commands him to put the collar back on. She's still confused and she doesn't trust him at all. Morgan starts begging her to let him go and promises that he will not do anything to ruin her family or their reputation. He just wants to vanish and savor the years that he has left. And though Lauren feels sorry for him, she can't gamble her family's safety so she walks away. That night, Lauren's still wholly devastated about everything she's discovered. She continues to investigate about Morgan's identity, but unfortunately, she fails as her father made sure to wipe out any information about him, or so Morgan said. She's mad at herself, at the situation, and at her father, and her anger culminates into Lauren smashing her childhood photo with him. She only calms down when she finally goes to bed to lie beside her daughter and husband. The following day, Lauren goes back to the bunker looking more resolute. When she faces Morgan, she informs him that she's finally giving him his freedom, provided that Morgan will stand by his promise of vanishing. She provides him with a bag of clothes and gives him privacy to change. In the meantime, Lauren meets Harold privately, instructing him to help a man escape and set up an account for him. She withholds the details of Morgan's identity, and when Harold urges to know the reason for his errand, Lauren only tells him that the person they're helping is a man her father had wronged. While waiting for Lauren's return, Morgan is pacing back and forth inside the bunker. Oddly enough, he seems to be reciting what sounds to be a cake recipe over and over again, until Lauren arrives. For one last time, he takes a short look at every corner of his prison, and after keeping a chess piece, he's ready to leave with Lauren. When Morgan sees his surroundings beyond the bunker, he can't help but sob in relief. In the joy of finally witnessing it again, of finally living, Lauren provides Morgan a private jet with Harold waiting for him. As a souvenir, Morgan gives Lauren an ad of a pie which has kept him going throughout his years of imprisonment. Before he gets on the plane, Lauren shows him the collar and threatens to pin all of her father's crimes on him if he ever comes back and breaks his promise. And with that, he gets on the plane with Harold. That night, Lauren returns to the bunker to clean it up, and unbeknownst to her, her colleague has found files about a missing person, and they match Morgan's fingerprints. While she's tidying up the place, Catherine arrives home and picks up a package left by the door. She then finds Archer's office a complete mess, so she goes to look for Lauren. Meanwhile, Lauren's only received her colleague's messages when she got out of the bunker. With that, she dashes off to their house. When she's finally home, 
She keeps calling for Catherine, who she soon finds in her father's office, shocked by all the files about Morgan. Catherine is horrified upon seeing the man's photo, but instead of calling him Morgan, she identifies him as Carson. Terrified that she's made a horrible mistake, Lauren argues that the man's name is Morgan and that Archer had kept them in a bunker in their backyard, and so she let him go, thinking that she did the right thing. But Catherine immediately asserts that Carson is pure evil. The weight of her actions comes crashing down on Lauren, but she does her best to get herself together. She assures her mother that she's going to fix this problem before heading straight to where the jet is parked. Lauren finds that she can't contact Harold, and when she arrives, she realizes why. Harold is already dead. Realizing that Carson is after her family, she hurries back home and while driving, she calls her mom to warn her, but Catherine is no longer answering. She gets back home and keeps calling out for her, but no one's there. Lauren can only think of one place where Carson could have hidden Catherine, and that's the bunker. She immediately runs to the backyard and into the bunker, where she finds Catherine unconscious on the ground. While she keeps waking her up, Carson suddenly appears behind her and turns off all the lights. This gives him an edge over Lauren, since being trapped in the dark for so long has refined his senses. He even claims to hear her heartbeat. Armed with a pistol and the light from her cell phone, Lauren musters up the courage to locate the man in total darkness. When Lauren hears a rattling noise, she immediately fires in that direction but as she does, Carson charges at her from behind before repeatedly hitting her. Lauren tries her damnness to fight him off but Carson overpowers her and hits her harder until she passes out. After a while, Lauren regains consciousness and realizes that she's been chained up. Carson looks at her as though he's thoroughly enjoying the sudden turn of events where he graduated from being a captive into a captor. The man is equal parts unhinged and animated as he delightedly admits that he's responsible for Archer's death by slowly giving him the poison that Archer had prepared for him. He jammed it in his hand while they were playing chess, and like a rat, Archer fell for Carson's trap and to his demise. When Catherine wakes up, Carson eagerly urges her to recall the night they shared together at a party, where he dragged her into a room. He talks about it like it was a very pleasurable and very consensual affair, but Catherine sharply retorts that he forced himself on her, to which Carson just answers, semantics. The unhinged man goes on to blame Catherine for everything, asking her why she couldn't just lie about what happened like a normal wife. Archer was furious about it, of course. He didn't even give Carson the chance to talk himself out of it, but that was when it happened, when Archer took Carson and drove away. He had run over a young student in the process. Carson knew the power he had over Archer. Knowing something like that could completely ruin him. But what Carson didn't expect was that Archer had it in him. He admits to being a bad man, but he claims that Archer was plain evil. Archer knew there was some fates worse than deaths. He needed Carson to suffer, and his agony became Archer's private joy. He vented, Carson listened. Archer beat him, Carson took it. Carson proceeds to hit Catherine, and a terrified Lauren quickly tries to cut a deal with him. She offers to pin all the crimes to her father in exchange for their lives. For a moment, Carson asks if she'd really do that for him, only to mock her, saying that he doesn't cut deals. He proceeds to go on a grand, frenzied, and batty tirade about how he'll burn her family's legacy to the ground, how Lauren won't be there to experience her family's shame because she and Catherine will be rotting away there in the bunker. He even brings up Lauren's little daughter, which makes her furious. She provokes him and squashes his face until he bleeds, which angers Carson so much that he suddenly reveals to Lauren that he is her goddamn father. Those were Carson's last word before he's shot in the head by Catherine, who is right behind him. But amidst the chaos and violence they found themselves in, Catherine still assures the stupefied Lauren that she's a Monroe, and Monroes protect their own. To end their nightmare, they pour gasoline in every corner of the bunker, and when they get out, they set the entire place on fire, and burning along with the bunker is the last trace of Carson's existence. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.